Okay, hello everyone. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. It's another exciting opportunity to learn at ATP Life. And guess what? This is the final edition for the year. Hooray! I'm sure you have learned something throughout the year. It's it's been really you know educative. It's been exciting. It's been it's been exciting. And we're thankful to God. We're grateful. This is the final edition. And guess what? It's open house. So you're free to ask any question you want in any area. And Dr. Bimi is in the house, you know, as usual. I mean, Dr. Bimi has been here for all the ATP live shows. I should clap for her. <laughs> well done, Dr. Bimi. <laughs> Thank you, Alpha. <Alpine. laughs> all right. So okay. good morning and welcome, everyone. I encourage you to share the videos so that your friends can have opportunities to learn watch and ask their questions so dr baby good morning and welcome officially <laughs> yeah good morning everyone and it's a pleasure to have you all join us on ATP life uh this beautiful saturday and merry christmas to everyone in the house i really want to thank you so much for those who have joined us and those who have been consistent in joining us on ATP life this is something we started this year on ask the pediatrician yeah, foundation sure. and we've really been able to do so many editions and we'll see it today so we're really very grateful to God. so we thank you Thank you for being part of it. And um, I really want to thank everyone who celebrated my birthday with me last week. And thank you so much for all those who contributed, uh, who donated, those who sent goodwill messages, those prayers. I'm really, really, really grateful for everything and for all of you because of you. That's why we are here. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much. And so once again, welcome to ATP Live this morning. And um, this morning we will be. It's an open house, so you can ask any questions you have, and then we'll be here to answer your questions. So welcome to It's With Your Life. Uh, once again, please share the video and ask any questions that you have, you know, um, whatever question you have, just ask us this morning, and we'll be very happy to take them. So, um, well, if you are on the watch party, uh, remember that we will not be able to see your question, so you may have to click on the video and then to take you straight to the page, and then you can drop your question directly under the, the under the video. Uh, mm -hmm. Our moderators, if you're watching, kindly help us to move the questions on the watch party straight down to the um, to the live uh, part of the program so that we can answer them. So I can see some people have started to join us. Uh, I can see Esther, good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. Okay, mm -hmm. great. So it's ATP Live, you're welcome. All right, you're welcome. Dr. Bimi, so 2018 has been an exciting year for ATP. You can attest to that. Can you just yes. give us a, um, an overview of what ATP did in 2018? Yeah, so I, I really like the fact that you brought it out. Uh, <laughs> so we'll be counting our license for year 2018. I think year 2018 has been a phenomenal year for us on actual pediatricians as far. Well. We went from, you know, just being <laughs> local and just being uh, <laughs> doing our own thing in our little corner to becoming international so it's been so an amazing year so we started you know in 2017 doing outreaches in one state or the other but in 2018 we went beyond lagos state we've always done lagos mm -hmm. state in 2018 we went to quara we went to quara twice we went to like five other states we went to abuja we went to emo and we were able to reach more children i think we reached maybe over 5,000 children uh, in year 2018, and that's I me, mean, it's very phenomenal. We were able to commission the uh, the school building that we oh, renovated sweet. for uh, the Mansha community, and it's quite phenomenal. And each time I see the picture of those children, no longer learning in the, uh, under the tree, but the in the setting, I mean, it's really so amazing. And you know, one thing is that when you are just there doing your own little thing, you don't know that some people are taking notes of that. Mm, and true. that same year, 2018, uh, we applied for the Facebook fellowship and 
out of 6,000 applications, only 46 were chosen. And Axe Pediatrician is one of the two communities that was chosen in uh, Nigeria. <laughs> and so that shows the impact that, so it's not just being a local champion, but the international community was able. So I was privileged to go to the US and to represent all of us, represent the pediatricians uh, in Facebook headquarters and to tell them what we do. And many people were so amazed at what we've been able to do. I was able to appear on the BBC Live uh, radio and, you know, talk, talk, talking about Axie Pediatricians Foundation. So it has been so amazing and we got that grant. We're going to get a grant of $50,000 from Facebook and we are already, you know, planning what we're going to do. So we're looking forward as we go into 2019. We have so much uh, to, to do. And we've gone from spending, I think what we spent for the whole year of 2017, in, in the first quarter of 20, in the first half of 2018 alone, we, we, we spent it already. I mean, that's us do, because we run ATP year from, uh, July to July because we were officially registered as a corporate entity in July, in July 2017. So what we when we audited our accounts, I mean, what we spent for the whole year of July 2017 to July 2018 in 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 those this, this, uh, from July 2018 to this December, we even spent over that already, and that means we've not even gone half of our year, and that shows how. <laughs> Exciting so and it's we're amazing. looking forward in 2019 to ACP going in. I mean, all, all the states of the country. Everybody is saying, oh, when are you coming to? When are you coming? Oh Everybody is saying, when are you coming to my home community? When are you going to do outreach in our community? Rest assured, we are ready in 2019, and we have support, and we're looking forward to more support. In fact, when I look at our budget for the coming year, it was so <laughs> staggering, and I'm like, wow, we're going to double. I mean, like, go like 10 times of what we've always spent before mm -hmm. um, in a year. And this is in a group that we just, we were just a charity. We don't have anybody giving us that. We are not related to any political or anything. So I'm quite amazed at what uh, we have been able to do and what God has enabled mm -hmm. us to do. So and thank you to everyone uh, who has been mm -hmm. part of it. Also, we say TP Live started in, also in this last year. I mean, we've not been doing it TP Live. We do our group discussion, but we've been able to do it consistently every Saturday, and that's amazing. I think mm -hmm. so from June, when did we start? Um, I think, yeah, we started before I left. Oh, that June. was in January. Yes. Yeah, we started and we've been able to run it and so many videos. Uh, I'm really that's amazed awesome. as well to be able to do. So we thank everyone and we thank God for the grace and the privilege. Okay. So it's like our question has started to arrive. So let's all start right. to answer right. that. <laughs> okay, this is from Amadou Chin Chinyere. Treatment for constant cough. She's asking what's the treatment for constant cough. Okay, uh, Amadou, you didn't, number one, good, thank you so much for your question and thank you so much for joining us, but you are not very specific. Is this question for an adult? Is it for a child? Mm -hmm. And when you say constant cough, how constant is constant? How long has this cough been going on? Uh, as I always state in Ask the Pediatricians and as I always, always uh, tell uh, people on our Facebook group, doctors, we are no magicians. We, they, they, you can't, you are not even asking me what is causing the constant cough. You just want to know oh, what is the treatment. Yeah. Let doctors work. I think we have to know what is causing your constant cough because there are so many things that can cause constant cough. And that it is the cause that will determine the treatment. And, and for me to know the cause of your constant cough, I need to ask you a lot more questions. I need to ask you how long the cough has been going, what time, who is affected. Is it an adult or is it a child? Because the cause of constant cough which I assume means chronic cough in a child is quite different from that of a baby. You know, so those are all the questions I'm going to ask. And before I have, after asking that question, then I will need to examine your chest and all that before I can now know. I may even need to send you for a chest x-ray before I now know what is causing your cough. You know, because wow. it could be something as simple as pneumonia, chest infection. It could be something as moderately severe like asthma, or it could be something as very, very uh, serious, like a lung cancer, <laughs> so or it adds a, a hole in the heart. So there are many possible causes. So 
I'm really stressing this so that when people ask questions on ATP and they like, why are you always sending us to go to the hospital? This is why I'm, I'm trying to explain it. I know we've always said it, but I'm not going to be tired of saying it because that's one of the culture <laughs> we're trying to promote on ATP. Yeah. We want you to know we educate you ahead. Our goal on ATP is not to treat you. Well, I've always said that we're not an online hospital. Our goal is not yeah. to uh, to make a diagnosis. We can't because there's a limit to what you can do online. Our goal is to give you information, as educate you to know that this is a condition for hospital. This is how to live in good health. This is how to promote good health. That has always been our goal. So we don't advocate, we don't make diagnosis, we don't treat. And the reason is what I'm just stating. I've got there are so many possible reasons why you could be having constant call. So once again, I'm um, just going to I, I encourage you to see a doctor. Will we ask all those questions I'm trying to ask you now? Who we examine you? Who may send you for X-ray, maybe some other blood tests, and based on that, we now know the cause of your constant cough, and then we'll be able to tell you uh, this is, um, uh, the treatment. So, um, <laughs> depending whether it's a child or not. So, uh, if a ch if somebody is having cough longer than two weeks, we call it chronic cough. Any cough that has been going on for more than two weeks is too long; it's mm -hmm. chronic, mm -hmm. and that person needs to be seen in an hospital, you know, for proper evaluation and treatment. I hope uh, it's in you. and I hope all the other ACP members, because sometimes we, we have our complaints is getting less. Thank God. Thank you, guys. We're but, learning. We're learning. <laughs> <laughs> well, people don't seem to understand us initially when we started. They were like, you are a doctor. I'm already talking to you, so why do I need to go and see another doctor? <laughs> but they don't understand. I can't be doing shit chats back and forth on, 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 on social media, and I can't examine you on Facebook. So there's no way I can treat a child on Facebook. The only thing I can tell you that drop everything you're doing now, go to the hospital. Or this is something, oh, it's not something to worry about. We can give you extra education around that, but we cannot make diagnosis. And that is one of the reasons we also don't prescribe medication. We can't treat people because there are so many things involved in that. Thank you. Senior. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bimi. Okay, we have another question from Akinyemi. Okay, Dr. Bimi, my question is this. My baby of three does not like to eat till 11 a.m. in the morning. Should I be worried? Oh, I don't understand that question. What time does the baby wake up and what time? Because I could imagine that you're three year old. I don't know what time the baby wakes up. If the baby wakes up at 10, for example, and doesn't oh, want sorry. to take it fast until 11, I mean, I'm not going to be worried. But if I know a typical Nigerian mother, your baby is awake as early as 7 or 8 a.m. Because maybe your baby is even going to school and all that. Maybe you are a self-employed mother. Maybe that's why your baby is with you at home. Even some of us that are <laughs> going to office for 8 or 9, then your, your three-year-old is already in school. So it depends. So if the child, uh, and also when was when did the child take the last meal? Is it a child that woke up in the middle of the night to have something and all that? So, there's so many things. So the most important thing is that is the child eating adequately for the age. I'm not worried about the time. As long as the child is taking maybe four, four meals a day and two healthy okay. snacks, and the child is adding weights and the child is gaining weight. So it, yeah. But I, I think for your own peace of mind and for your own um, <laughs> ability to maintain your sure day, it, it should be nice to have a routine. It should be nice that you all eat together as a family. So it's better all everybody have their breakfast at the same time. Everybody have their lunch. Mm -hmm. So you may need to create your own routine into the family then it depends on what you are giving the child at, at that time maybe what you're giving the child breakfast is not meant to be heavy so it should be something like it just be a cup of tea a slice of bread or toast with egg and something like a child can and do but maybe for example i don't know i'm just guessing maybe you give a bowl of rice and the child doesn't want to eat it at at say uh, 80 ham so a cup of tea or maybe one slice of bread may just be enough for your breakfast or maybe toast or cereal, those kind of things. So it depends on what you're giving child. So you may want to clarify uh, your questions and we can provide more answers. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Bimi. Okay. I think Amadi is back. Can a six months old baby eat a bath? <laughs> okay. So Amadi, thank you for your question. A six months old baby can be started on complementary phase. That's not the issue. But the issue is that you grade it. So you start with semi-solid and then gradually progress to solid. I can imagine that EBA is really a bit heavy to start with. You may want to start with something semi, like 
like porridge, like pap, things like that, that are not. So you try to go for completely liquid milk, breast milk diets. You, you don't want to start the child on ever, unless you make it like really very soft, very, you know, not the kind you will throw on the wall that will bounce back to you. <laughs> but the soft one that, that you with a lot of vegetables, like maybe okra soup or, or a we do, you know, grain leaves, uh, uh, soup, those kind of things. So that when the child is taken, it's really, really soft. But otherwise, I don't want to, you, you can't go and give. But I know some people will tell me, oh, when I'm eating my own, eba, my six months old is really interested in to. eating and want to. That's fine. But please make sure whatever you're giving a six months old is really, really soft and semi uh, solid mashed. Uh, you may want to go and do our units courses. If you had one of those listening to me and you have not done our units course on nutrition, one or two, you need to really do it. It's very interesting. It's very, oh, it's an audiovisual kind of a course. You just watch short videos, very practical, very broken down. So you need to go to ATP Facebook group. When you get to our Facebook group, if it's available on this our page as well, if you go to the video section, but in the Facebook group, we've already put it on that what we call units. If you just look for what is called units, when you click on the unit, you will see nutrition 101 on um, breast milk. You will see uh, the 102 on complementary feeding. You will see other units because it's like all our ATP live videos, all our, there's one on speech and language and all that. We're going to do more in terms of units next year. But these are the ways by which you can. But I strongly recommend for all mothers that they should do the units course oh, wow. on, on uh, nutrition complementary food. Really, I think by now most mothers are already getting us when it comes to uh to breastfeeding, but they are still struggling with the complementary feeding. So I really want you guys to 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 learn that. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bumi. All right, this is from Ojini. Please, ma, my baby eats well but never looks good. Wow. I don't what understand do you mean that question. Good. I'm not so sure what you mean by never lose good because yes. <laughs> as, as a pediatrician, I really always want to know what mommy means. Uh, I mean, when they ask mm -hmm. questions. So, are you saying the child is not adding weight, it's not big? Wait. Or are you saying the child is some people may not, may just even be that the skin of the child, maybe they, are, they want the child to keep looking with both pepper and the child is looking black like me. Or yes, black. Black. <laughs> so, um, uh, Claribel, I would really appreciate if you really be more specific. But if you're asking about food, I guess maybe you're talking about your baby not having weight. Then the next question I want to ask is, uh, what is the weight of this baby? Because of course, you know, my Nigerian mothers, they like chubby fat babies and i always wonder yeah. do you want to go sell these babies <laughs> i mean why do we always like shoppy babies and when babies are now older we want them to all lose the fat and when they become teenager you don't want them fat again you want them but when they are babies you want them but you don't what people don't need to understand is that when you when you start feeding babies and making them chubby as babies you actually prime me their organs there just like the pancreas that produce insulin, you're already priming them to be obese as adults. And so I always tell mothers on ACP, like, we want your babies to have healthy weight. We don't want chubby babies. We want them to be healthy. Mm -hmm. So a baby may be healthy without necessarily looking chubby. And when I mean chubby, you know, fat cheek, fat everything, mm -hmm, you know, like that. <laughs> we don't want that. As long as your baby has a good weight. And you know what mothers normally do is that they compare their babies to With their friends the baby. So they look at all the because all the mothers were bringing out the babies and they will everybody is looking at oh my baby uh, we are all born at this I mean, all these babies were born at the same time and they want to see whether all the babies are are looking that fat together. No. So your baby doesn't have to look fat. And if you're also from the family where you guys are you know slim feet <laughs> you, you can't expect your baby what to be and all that so it's also just genetic power but the most important thing for us is what is the weight before you say your baby is not looking good i need to know the age of the baby i need to know the weight of the baby and i need to know whether it was born at full time or your baby was born premature because even babies that are born That's premature true. we need to correct for that as well when we're looking at their weight so these are the things that will help me to know and if your baby is otherwise ld your baby is not sick and all that those are the important thing for us those are what makes the baby look good to a pediatrician, having the <laughs> appropriate weight for age, being healthy, not free from sicknesses, illnesses, and all that. That is what looks good to me as a pediatrician. Maybe 
I'm not sure whether that's the same thing you meant because so, I so you may want to tell me what you mean. So I don't want to assume I know what you mean. So I, let me just leave it at that so that I don't go overboard. All right. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. All right. Here we have oh, Arabelle again. Has done the pool more than five times yesterday. Okay. okay, so Clary Bell, you really, you really need to read a lot more on our Active Federation Facebook group. So again, you, for me to even answer this question, I need to number one know how old your baby is. I'm trying to look back whether you told me the age of your baby. I can't see any place mm -hmm. where you tell me the age of your baby. You know, as a pediatrician, I always tell mothers we treat babies from zero, zero, zero yes. second, zero second of life. <laughs> to 18 years of life. So when you say baby, it, for me, it, I don't know what it means because, and most mothers, even their 20 year old, they still call them babies. So you really need to be <laughs> specified. So you need to tell me, is your baby a newborn baby? How old is your baby in weeks, in months, in days, in years? I really need to know. And then that would tell me whether five times of point is something to worry about or okay, not. Well, I can't give you a general rule of the term. As long as the stools are not watery, I'm not worried. Even if the baby passes 10 times, as long as it's a normal form stool. So it's not even the number of times the baby passes the stool that I'm worried about. I'm more worried about the the, the nature. Is a watery stool, is a normal stool. If it's normal stool and baby passes eight times, five times, that is still normal. Uh, like for example, your baby is a newborn baby or a baby, they can pass to up to like 12, 14 times a day. And that's normal. As long, some of them pass to each time they breastfeed, they will pass something because there's a reflex in the body that as they are sucking to relax the rectum and whatever little is there will come out. That doesn't mean child is having diarrhea. As long as this tool is not watery. And watery stool for a newborn like or a baby less than six months is actually like when the, the stool looks like urine. As per like water, is sink completely mm -hmm. into the diaper. Not that, not, not because you're, they're still are not going to look very solid, well formed like that of you and I. It's, it's going to really be semi formed, like you know, we say something like uh, melon soup or a goose soup. So that is not diarrhea because sometimes mothers always worry about those things and say, Oh, my baby is having diarrhea. No, that is still normal soup for them. So I think we need to really be bringing to break down. So, Clary Bell, if you still want me to clarify your question, you can say, put it more. I hope you are listening. Yeah. So right. done. this is from a couple of parts. My children eat bread and butter a lot. Does it have any side effects? Bread and butter. <laughs> okay, bread and butter. Okay, I think we've done um one of the one of the things I'm going to say is that please as we are ATP is going to break, we're going to break um from uh Christmas 24th. Eve to the seventh of January. I will encourage you to watch all our previous videos. I will encourage you to read up all the things we've done. So we've had a whole lot. I, it was the last week or two weeks ago. We did a whole lot on nutrition, dietary choices in toddlers and things like that. So, and I was telling mother that there's no bad food and there's no good food. All food are good. But what we want you to do is that food should not be taken in isolation. They should be taken in combination. So we want you to take, and we talk about the different classes of food. Okwe, can, uh, was Okwe, were you the one with me or Vera? Yes. I'm not sure now. But I'm yes, sure you... I was, I was. So we should, you should, so bread is uh, energy giving food. Or, or carbohydrates, or the pyramid. Butter is fat. It's also energy giving food, and we, we we show you the food pyramid. I think I still have that food pyramid somewhere here. I will, I will I will put it up later. So we show you the food pyramid. The most important thing is that you must give food from each of these. I will worry if your babies eat only bread and butter every day. I will yeah. definitely worry about it. But if they eat bread and butter, oh, okay, I have the food pyramid. Let me show it now. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure whether you can see it. So you can see what, this is the food pyramid. The fat is almost towards the end. That means they need to take a little quantity of it. And the the lower part is the... Um, I think I have a clearer one. I'm looking for a clearer one. The lower part of it is the... Uh, the lower part of it is the... Uh, the carbohydrates or energy giving food or not that. So you need to take food from each of these classes. At least each time your baby, you are making your food plates, your children should have nothing less than four out of those four six portions. classes of food on their plate. That, that's the most important thing. 
And the most important thing is that it's, it has to be variety. So each time you are combining them, it should not be the same food all the time. So basically, that's what we're saying. So it is not there's nothing wrong with eating bread and butter, but you should, they shouldn't eat bread and butter every day. And they shouldn't eat it like three times a day. They shouldn't eat it like that. Mm -hmm. So you have to, if they eat it maybe one a Monday, then maybe Tuesday, they should have something else for breakfast. It shouldn't be like bread and butter every day. You know, that's what we're trying every to say. Day. And if you are giving bread and butter, why is the protein? So you need to give them protein. Maybe you need to have egg by the side. It could be boiled oh, egg. It could be egg. You have to give milk. them milk, maybe from tea and things like that. So you need to make sure that you have combination. That's for me is the most important thing. Thank you. All right, Louis Juliet. What are the causes of pimples on the face of a seven-year-old girl? Please, what are the possible treatments? Okay, so uh, pimples on the seven-year-old girl is yeah. Uh, ideally, a child at that age should not be having pimples. So we call it could be it could be a sign of what we call premature adrenaline. In other words, like the child is maturing too early. And it could be a, it could just be an unusual normal thing, or it could be, uh, it could be an unusual normal thing, or it could just be something else is going on that we need to investigate further. So what I would recommend is that you see a pediatrician first, because it may look like just ordinary pimples, but we need to be sure there's nothing else uh, going on, uh, going on in that child. So basically, that's what I would recommend that you should do uh, to make sure that um, uh, uh, to make sure that the, this pimples we are talking about is not something more sinister or something that requires further investigation. But I think I would recommend you see a pediatrician, preferably who we call pediatric endocrinologists they are the experts in that because it's not at mm -hmm. it's not and please don't focus i know most, everybody's always asking what's the treatment what's the treatment the treatment is not always the most important thing in all because for us as a doctor the most important thing is what is the cause what is the cause? And the reason why i have to really sound this warning because sometimes people focus on treatment they don't focus on the cause. And because of that, they end up coming late to treat some very, very bad uh, underlying conditions. You understand? For example, I'm not trying to scare you, but a child who has this kind of condition may have a brain tumor, for example, that is producing those hormones that is not supposed to be. So if you just go and be buying acne cream or all those kind of things, you and delay mm. taking that child to the hospital, and then on the day, the child comes to us very late. And sometimes, even if you are in the best place in the world, there's a limit to what can be done if you come too late. So, uh, if there's any message I'm going to leave today is because is that whenever a child is sick, please don't focus on treatment. Focus on why is this child having the symptoms. The same thing applies even to common things as fever. People just Oh, fever, just give parasomal, keep giving parasomal. And then you give, I, 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 we've had people tell us they give me parasomal every day for months. And even the advert says, after two days, see your doctor. It, it, there's a reason why they put that in the advert. I don't know why people don't think it's very important. There's a reason why that, that clause is there. It's because after two days, if the fever is not going, there's something causing that fever that is really serious. And the doctors must investigate it. So when you ask us questions, please don't be concerned about treatment. The treatment is the easiest thing to do. Once you know what is causing it, because if you don't know what is causing it, then you just be keep giving treatment and you'll be giving, uh, like my people will say, you'll be giving the treatment for headache, for stomachache. <laughs> oh, 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 I don't know how to say it now. And that is a very, very valid uh, proverb. What it means is basically that we need to know what is causing the problem before we know the treatment. And causes yeah. of, of whatever symptoms are not always often apparent. So we, we doctors, we don't claim to be magicians. We don't claim to, to know, you know, it's maybe babalis that one that when you tell them they know. We, we have to do our own, we are like investigators. We have to do our own research 
you know, do some tests, ask you a lot of questions. People, sometimes we don't see no, even after asking you questions, we don't see no after taking, examining your baby. We still need to do tests. Sometimes even after doing basic tests, we still don't know. Sometimes we need to do more uh, expensive tests. You know, so people need to understand it because sometimes people get frustrated with the medical process and they want to go for something quick fix. But it's, all, it's not always the best. I hope I'm mm -hmm. sounding a message. So this is not even to the person who is asking this question. This is just a general uh, information yeah, for all of us to know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dr. Binder. I'm just sorry. Please educate me on how many times a baby should take juice. Yeah, am I the, yeah, what kind of juice are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, am I teaching hearing? You really need to do that nutrition one or two course. I I I think that's my Christmas gift to you. <laughs> you really need to do that course because it will answer all these questions. Very valid questions that you are asking. Mm -hmm. It will answer, I assure you, it will answer it. So if you don't know how to get to the unit, if you post your question on our group generally after the program. Somebody will put the link for you. But put if you use link. your laptop or yeah, if you use your laptop, just look for under the menu on is it the right hand side now here yeah, of of on, on the Facebook uh, uh, page. Awesome. You will see and once you're in our group on the page where you see photo, video, menu, you will see the parts for units. Just click on that unit, it will take you into uh the parts about nutrition because you really need to understand that, that for example. How old is this baby? A baby below one year should not take anything more than water. Water or milk. That's the only beverage we recommend for babies below one year. And if you want to give juice at all, it has to be your own fruit juice that you make in your own kitchen. Not the one the concentrates that people are buying in the stores. So if you buy your own orange, peel it by yourself and squeeze it out. And if your baby is like six months old, you have to see dilute it even further with water, you know. So, but from nine months, seven months, then you can give. And it's not like they need to take it every day because you can say how many times. The baby doesn't even need to take juice at all. In, so there's no point about how many times. The baby can take fruits. I would rather your baby go for that. Or you can, but you can make it into smoothie. You can juice it and all that. The fruit is what the baby really needs to take. And maybe they can take it as a snack, maybe twice a day. It's not juice is not something they should be drinking like water. Your baby should better drink water if the baby is above six months than juice. And I know this is something most mothers do. I'm shaking a lot of tables this morning. All those people that always pack juice yes. <laughs> into their food lunch, please repent in, in year 2019. <laughs> so please, because the way that question was framed is as if it's expected. That baby should be drinking juice, and you just want to know how many times. Maybe should not even be drinking juice. Like we expect them to drink water, not juice. We expect, if I would rather, I would even prefer you say how many times maybe should drink milk <laughs> rather than saying juice. Okay, milk. Yes, yeah, maybe should because the baby below two years should be drinking milk. And if you if you drink for babies in the first five years of that, when their brain is still developing, they still need all those DHA. So you may want to give them milk containing DHA so they can take taking milk even in the first five years. So that's okay, but not juice, please. Okay, so thank you. Our time is running. Wow. Right, thank you. <laughs> wow, okay. Um, young of Sumo, my one year old takes only cereal and not solid food. Should I introduce Abidek for him to boost his appetite for solids? I don't know whether it's because I did exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> That's a baby. Okay. Okay, I think you should give us a special. Yeah. It's okay, not it was gift. I'm not. I will not be tired. Once again, please, 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 please. <laughs> all of you should go and do that unit course on nutrition one or two. I mean, one of the things that always amazes me is for us, especially, and this is one of the reasons why we have ATP is that this information are available online. They are available everywhere. We are available on Artificial Facebook. They are available on our page, but moms don't take it. And I'm still going to keep reminding you to go and do that nutrition one or two course. But to answer your question, number one. It is not because you did exclusive breastfeeding that your baby is not eating solid. Wrong. <laughs> False. Two, Abidec is not going to make your baby eat or any multivitamins for that matter or any other appetite stimulants medication because most of those uh, drugs that are marketed as appetite stimulants are not originally made to be for appetite. They have other effects that they were supposed to make. And so when you give it for... so. 
Appetite stimulation is actually a side effect of those medications. Now, people now capitalize on that and start marketing them. But what normally happens is that the real work that that drug is supposed to do, it will now start doing it and causing problems for your baby. So your baby will have a lot of side effects that you are not planning for because that is what the drug is meant to do anyway. But you were taking it because of the appetite. Please don't give all those uh, appetite boosts, super appetite, uh, ciproheptadine, ciproxine, all of them. I don't, you know their names. Please don't give it to your children. <laughs> The reason why most your babies don't take sleep is because you you mix it when you are doing your complementary feeding. And that is why I say you need to watch that nutrition one also because to take you through how you need to introduce complementary feeding. Well, complementary feeding is not just giving cereals to, to children. That's in, that's where mothers miss it. And then you get, keep giving them that cereal 24-7. You give it 24-7 from six months. And then you expect them suddenly to wake up and say it, but no, that doesn't help this. So if you go to the course, it tells you when you first start, this is how you start, and you start a variety almost immediately, and then how you grade it from zero, like semi early to become something grittier. When they're about nine months, how you introduce finger foods and things like that. There, there are processes to these things. So it is not a smooth, just that is to them. They all of a sudden, from when they are one year, you expect them to just go to family diet. When they are one year, we expect them to be on family diet. But you have to make sure you are doing it right. Most babies that are on exclusive breastfeeding are even better off taking complementary food because they've been tasting all those your complementary food from the breast milk. That's actually what this is research now. This is not just here say. So this is what we're trying to talk about. So, um, Queen, uh, you need to really go and do that course and see how to go. But all hope is not lost. You can see try. But the, the mothers always want quick fixes. I know when it comes to nutrition, people just want something like unfortunately I don't have any and there's none. You just have to go through that process and you have to understand it and you have to do it. and those who have now started doing it, they've been coming to testify to say Yes, we're getting it right. Most time, we, the mothers, we are the ones that created that scenario for ourselves. So we've been giving the children cereal because I know what happens. I'm a Nigerian mother as well. I know this is what people do. They just pack a flax of pap with them everywhere they go. And that's all this child will take from money. to That's not, that's not complimentary for them. Your baby should not be on bottles. They should be on plates. They should start taking with spoon from six months. Those are the ways to start building them, them ready. For when they are eating, you eat as a family so that they start seeing that eating is not a punishment for them. It is the same thing everybody is doing. I hope this is clear. So, I pray God will help you. Yeah. Okay, so let's just move on. Time is going. Okay, this is from Makiyevi. What is the cost of Larigo Malaysia in babies? Three months. Dr. Baby, help me out. Larigo Malaysia is something babies are born with and uh it's a condition it's a genetic condition but it's a it's a mild one and it will it will it will improve some of them may require treatment by the ENT uh basically what it means what I'm going to means that the larynx of that baby is not it's, it's a little bit too soft that's the easier way I can explain so when they are breathing in it's 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 or breathing it collapses and it makes them to have all this noise when they are breathing so, but as the baby gets bigger and stronger, it gets stronger. It becomes more, uh, what we call cartilage, become more fully formed as a cartilage, and then it's able to stand, and then it, the, the, the noise will go down. So, it, but that process may take up to like sometimes in some maybe it's one year, two years. But if you are worried about it, what you need to see, yeah, what you need to do is to see a ENT surgeon. But I assume you've seen one already, or you've seen a pediatrician because. For you to use the big time laryngo Malaysia, you must have seen a, a pediatrician already. So you've seen one already. So that's fine. Just do whatever they have to do. And if they've reassured you that, don't worry, it will, it will come to pass. Just oh, relax. Yes. I know mothers, sometimes people think um, you must, they must always be doing something about everything. And, and I, I know that's very common for us in our culture you always feel like i must always be doing something about everything that is going on but sometimes in medicine in pediatrics there are times you don't do anything and doing nothing is actually good in other words it's not every time you have to do something sometimes doing nothing is good i know you say it sounds very ridiculous especially to mothers because mothers are like 
they want to fix everything for their children. It's a maternal instinct. The fact that your dad is making that noise, you just like, ah, no, I must fix it. And when you've seen the pediatrician, the patient said, you don't do anything, don't worry to go. Sometimes people are not satisfied. They just feel like, maybe I, we should have given them one injection or one um, something. One something. And, and sometimes there's really nothing to give to you. <laughs> so just relax. It will come to pass, I can assure you. Sometimes the ENT can give you vitamin C or calcium. But most times, it's, if it's not so bad, it's resolved right. on its own. Really, that's the honest truth. It's no need to worry. Okay, we're moving fast now. So we have to <laughs> Okay, Uchechi Dennis. Good day, doctor. My son's right ear is bringing out water and pus. I've been to last week and we were given April before we can see an ENT. I can't afford a private ENT hospital. Okay, try loads. Try loads. I, I, I can, I look at critically that loads ENT is not that long to see because they run clinic almost every day apart from Wednesday. So try loads, but I think because if your baby's hair is bringing out water, you, you there's some treatment where you give one that treatment first, like antibiotics while you are waiting to see the ENT. Of course, there are some treatments that can be started by the ordinary general doctors, even pediatricians, before you see the ENT doctors. I know that uh, <laughs> that's one of the reasons why we have ATP to support our health system because our health system is really overstretched. Uh, but um, I would I would recommend trying teaching hospital like loads. Sometimes even going nearby to Ogun State, I know Babcock and the rest of them, they are not as busy uh, because Lagos State is really quite uh, heavy. Um, and there are ENT in other places, not only Lasso that have ENT. I think Aurelia Gege General Hospital has ENT. I think General Hospital Lagos has ENT. So if you go to Lasso and you can try other places, I'm sure there are many ENT centers apart from even Lasso. Loot is there, Aurelia Gege, General Hospital Lagos. There are so many other places you can try. Or you can go to neighboring states, Babcock and the rest of them also have uh, uh, ENTs that may be uh, uh, able to help. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, next question. Tell your seat or day, me. Good morning. Please, my seven months, I'm seven months pregnant. What can I do to increase my pelvic in preparation for delivery? <laughs> increase your pelvic. <laughs> Please, so this, uh, ask the pediatrician. So I think that should be directed to the, the family physician. Yeah, we have our family, ATP family. So you can go ask. Uh, you have a gynecologist, a family physicians. So you have all of them. But I'm, I'm not so sure there's anything you can do to increase your pelvis. Your pelvis is your normal structure. So if your doctors have told you that your pelvis is narrow, hey, but let me answer that question because that's the part that concerns me as a pediatrician. If the pelvis, if the, your gynecologist or your doctors have told you that you have a narrow pelvis and they've recommended cesarean section yes. for you, please let them do it. Don't force yourself to have natural delivery because that is when it should concern me because if you force yourself to have natural delivery, your baby may come out. That's not a problem. The baby may come out, uh, but baby may not come out the way that you come and give work to the pediatricians. We will now have to run it as it is a fully well formed baby, and then we will now have to be dealing with a baby with developmental disability. That's my field, yeah, and I really don't want small babies with developmental disabilities. But I don't know why people are always so scared. There's nothing wrong with having cesarean section, there's nothing wrong with it. The most important thing. The most important outcome is that you are alive and your baby is alive and so healthy and well intact brain. You see, the most important thing, the most important organ during delivery is that brain. And if you watch our last week episodes, all the brain suffer any injury, it does it. There's nothing that can be done to reverse that injury. So that is one of the reasons why we don't want the... So people always think, oh, after a doctor said, I will have CS and I have my baby, my baby my baby was born vaginally. That is good. But the most important is that was your baby born with an intact brain or your baby has suffered brain damage from asphyxia. You know, so for me, if your pelvis is narrow, don't bother about widening your pelvis. Don't go for elective cesarean section. Let them bring down that baby so that people like Dr. Baby will not have to be running yet as <laughs> get over your baby later on in life. Um, and I, I'm, I'm saying it jokingly, but I'm very, very serious about it. And especially for most of my listeners who are Nigerians, please, it's very important. It's not just for the baby to come out. We want the baby to come out with an intact brain. It's so that the baby will be a useful 
and we're able to contribute. We are not saying people with disabilities don't contribute to the society, but we all know there's a lot of uh, resources that goes into supporting people with disabilities. And we are even in a country where the, we don't, we have not even started when it comes to disability support, unlike in other countries where they, they have so much support in place. And even there, they are still trying to prevent some of these things, but we, we have not even started. So please, it is safer and cheaper in the long run to have a cesarean section and have your baby well and fine than for you to say you want to widen pelvis or you now force yourself to have a natural delivery and your baby has got so uh, issues. Please, 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 please don't, don't do that. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah. So these are people, yeah, they've come now to ask me the question. I have answered the question. Oh, <laughs> Yes. Reciprocal health is to give a baby. Uh, I've answered it already. Please don't. Don't give your baby drugs, appetite stimulant. Please don't, don't, don't. If you go to ATP Facebook group, just, just search for Cipro. I've written out all the various possible side effects your baby is going to have. No pediatrician recommends it. It is not meant to be an appetite medication. Please don't give it to your children. I beg you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's you. move on quickly. Okay, this is from Omule Azuka. Good morning, ma. What can I do about the rashes on the back of my 11 months old baby? Uh, this is one of the most frequently asked questions. I think we'll do a lot more about rashes um, in uh, year 2019. Uh, but unfortunately, rashes, most times we can't even just treat. See, people think, oh, once you see it, you know what it is. Like, I was answering one question during the last, and now, now you are even asking about rashes that I've not even seen. <laughs> There's no way uh, we know what's discussing these rashes. Definitely. Even the one I've seen, I'm still asking questions. Like, a mother asked me last week on ATP, like, these rashes, is it measles or is it, uh, what is it? And I'm like, I can't even answer that question because the rashes that your baby has can occur in so many conditions. Not only measles, it looked like the kind of measles rash, but for it to be measles, the child must have had fever, the child must have had cough, must have had red eyes, must have had uh, runny nose for a few days before the rashes come and it must have started from the head and go down the face. So there are questions I need to ask you because that same rash can occur from you taking um, amoxicillin or ampicillin, for example. So somebody can take amoxicillin and come out with that same rash. Somebody could just, exactly. So or somebody has fever, they come out the right. So for me to know whether it's a measles or it's a drug rash, there are more questions to ask. And this is even a rash that somebody has sent a picture to me. But for some rashes, I, we need to even say it right. So for your own question, I don't even know, I can't even see the rashes to start with. So it's very difficult. So what I would recommend is to see a pediatrician or a dermatologist, especially if the rashes have been going on for a while. So, so... I really want people to understand why sometimes it's difficult for a pediatrician to answer some of their questions. I really wish you'd begin to get now. So, but I know uh, hopefully people begin to get us, they begin to understand more. There's a limit to what we can do by just you telling us one line sentence. No doctor can make it from one line sentence, even or from one picture. You know, there are many more things to ask, there are many more things to say before we can answer that question. All right. All right so thank you. Quickly. Let's say Nolamide, is it okay to use a soft wash clothes and age appropriate toothpaste to clean the tooth of my eight month old baby? He has two teeth already. Okay, yeah. So I mean we recommend using toothbrush. Once the baby has the first teeth, just use toothbrushes. Toothbrush. That's what is recommended. Nothing else. So toothbrushes are the best. Um uh, that's what the dentist. So when before the teeth, you can use soft clothes and water. After, or even if it's one tooth, there are babies, very soft toothbrushes, and there are fluoride containing baby, uh, toothpaste for babies toothpaste. that have age appropriate. So most of them, they are sold like mixed teeth, mixed teeth toothpaste, not your own regular toothpaste. So they sell it as mixed teeth toothpaste. So you can start using that. So that is appropriate. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is from Testy Ben. Good day, Doc. My baby has been running temperature for three days now. I ran a test on her full blood count. Nothing alarming was seen. She just completed a malaria treatment two weeks ago. Could she be ticking? She's seven months plus. So, who is the confused. doctor, Tessie? Who is the doctor, Tessie? 
So mothers, you are not supposed to be treating your baby. You should take your baby to the hospital. So I don't want mothers taking decision by themselves. Uh, your baby has fever, then you decide to go and do blood tests. Your baby has you've given her anti malaria. Please, there are reasons. Uh, there are reasons why it's important to see a doctor. Sometimes we don't even need to do a test to know what is causing fever. All we need to do is to examine your baby. Somebody just needs to listen to the chest of your baby. Somebody needs to touch the tummy. Those things are important. This is after examining your baby, we will know. We may need to look into the throat. We may need to look into the hairs. It may be hair infection. It may be tonsillitis. It may be throat infection. It may be so many things. But when you just see her home and just go and do blood tests, how will you know whether those things are affected? Mm -hmm. And I keep saying malaria and teething are not the only things that cause fever in children. Please. I know. I really, I really wish I could write it in the for Nigerian mothers. The fever is malaria is not the only cause. I know malaria is quite common in Nigeria, but it is not the only thing that can cause fever in children. Okay. So many there are so many things that can cause fever in children. There are I always say there are one thousand and one things. Even viral infections, even here, if if any infection can cause fever in children. Sometimes children can even have fever from dehydration that they don't have enough fluid in them. So there are so many causes of fever. So the fact that you treated malaria and then you did blood tests, nothing does not mean the child does, there's no cause of the fever, and it does not mean it's sitting, no. and sitting fever doesn't go on for three days, please. Sitting okay. is not so. I even before we can make a diagnosis of sitting, number one, sitting doesn't even cause fever, maybe it can make the child a little bit warm, but that diagnosis is like after we rule out the more serious causes of fever. So, malaria is not the only thing. The fact that a child has come to anti malaria doesn't mean the child doesn't have. Other causes, and if you if you have viral infection, for example, your full blood count will be normal. But the most important thing is to for first see a doctor, not necessarily a pediatrician. Any doctor you can do, who will just at least look at this baby. Sometimes just look into the ears is enough to say, oh, is this a uh, otitis media, mm -hmm. or look into the throat. We see the red inflamed and tonsils. Oh, we know what it is. Those are the things you cannot do as a mom. Please, also be sick more than two days. Go to the hospital. And don't go and be doing tests. I, Nigerian mothers have developed that habit, and it's a very bad habit. So they just take their children to themselves to the lab, and they just run the test. It's not good. Without seeing a doctor, it's not good at all. And sometimes some of them post this for me to interpret. I say, no, we're not going to do that, because we need to know the clinical setting before we can interpret. It could be even urine infection. Sometimes we need to do urine tests as well. So there are so many things that can cause fever in children that we really need to evaluate first. And it's how we start with clinically examining the child, and then we can now, you know. So, uh, Tessie, please take your child to the hospital, and then we can take it up from there. Thank you. Okay, I'm not cheering. She's laughing. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, she got to my message. Yeah, <laughs> okay. okay, this is from Kingsley. I think it's that, uh, this is one of us, Kingsley Melike, yeah. Okay, she just okay. You have truly made <laughs> for our generation, man. <laughs> Thank you very much for the session. All right, this is from Alice G. Please, why do some babies have boned leg? Okay, is it bow leg? I guess, maybe uh, that's I what. I guess some maybe it's a bow leg, it is natural, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know why, but that's just it's, it's natural because babies' legs are not as um. The, you know, the legs, they are the bones, they are how do I So, the, the those bones, they initially they form as like so what we call soft cartilage bone, they are not like they don't have enough calcium deposited in them as well. So, when children start walking and they start putting a little bit of pressure on those uh, bones because they are not yet very solid, strong bone like yours, they can actually bend a little bit. And so that's why it's important that children have calcium and all those vitamin D so that their bones can fully form. So there's a little of it that there's a little bow leg that we call physiological. There's nothing wrong. But there's a very obviously one that suggests there may be something wrong, like maybe lack of vitamin D, like or lack of calcium and things like that. We we'll call them rickets, you know, which can come, it could be nutrition, sometimes it could be some other conditions. So there are many conditions that can cause it. So if if you are not sure whether it is a natural one or is the uh, abnormal sure. one, the best thing to see the doctor, either a pediatrician, an orthopedic surgeon, or a pediatrician endocrinologist, any of us can handle that, then we will tell you, okay, 
that this, we will do some basic blood tests and say, so based on this blood cell, based on this bone X-ray, we, we think it's still the normal one, or we think there's rickets, and if it's rickets, we will treat it. If it's something, and sometimes there are some type that the surgeons even need to operate on the mm -hmm. on the leg. Yeah, so I think that's okay. All right. Yeah, I think I that means giving me a feedback. Uh, okay. Thank you, Ma, for the clarification on the laryngomycia. I am. I really appreciate it. Yes, she's been managed by an ENT doctor. I know. I possible. know because laryngomalacia is not. A, it's not a mommy's uh, diagnosis. You must have seen a professional. <laughs> to even know the word to get that. Laryngomalacia. You must have seen a professional. It's not something you get from Google like that. <laughs> okay. This is from John. Good morning, Doc. Please, I want to know if ah. giving my baby sleeping pill is okay, especially at night. <laughs> that is scary. <laughs> We will arrest you. Please don't. No, why would you even do that? Why would you do that? John, me, please I, I know. Don't baby sleeping pills. Why would you even do that? For what? Baby is not sleeping. How old is this baby we are talking about here? Please, this, this is a form of child abuse if you don't know it. And I'm, I'm, I'm scared that you're even asking at this public. Please don't. If you think your baby is not sleeping and you're worried about it, you need to, number one, I need to know the age of your child. I need to have some information. Is he a child with some developmental disabilities or something? Because sometimes some of them struggle with sleep. We know. But that should be left to a professional to do. A mother should never drug their children. <laughs> Don't give uh, Fenigan, don't give sleeping tap, don't go and give the asset, don't go and give Valium, don't go and, please, don't. The baby can stop breathing. That's the problem with sleeping tablet. They will just stop breathing and the baby can die. So please don't give sleeping pills. If your child is not sleeping for any reason, kindly see your pediatrician first. Let the pediatrician know, and I keep emphasizing it, why is this baby not sleeping? I think that's the most important thing for us to know. Sometimes baby, the baby is not sleeping because your room is too hot. Sometimes it's mosquito biting the baby. Sometimes it's the uh, diaper is too wet. So these are basic things that you even need to sort out first. When you finish sorting it out, if after you've done all and your baby is not sleeping, then come and see us. Then we will look again and decide. But even with pediatricians, we don't give sleeping pills. Though. We really give it. We really, really, really give it. So please be careful. Don't do that. Thank you. Thank you, Okay. I did surgery. Please, doctor, is it okay to give a baby vitamin D when you stay up? Right? Is it okay to give a baby vitamin D? When yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, vitamin D. I will leave that to. I will leave that to your. Your doctors, doctors are decide. Yeah. <laughs> I know some places they will actually check the level of the vitamin D. In Nigeria, we usually don't receive give you vitamin D. And we also have to be careful because some of the multivitamins you give routinely, like your you know, your, your regular multivitamin, I'm not going to mention anybody any names there now. They also contain vitamin D already. So you may need to be sure. So that you, because vitamin D is one of those vit, fat soluble vitamins, it can get too much in the body. So you have to be very careful. You're not giving too much of it. So discuss with your doctor, your GP. If they are not sure, they may ask you to do a vitamin D level and they may decide to give it. But if you are giving the regular multivitamins, you may you may have been giving it in, in advantageously as well. So just, just I will leave that to you. It depends on each country have their own standard practice. But I know in Nigeria we don't receive really vitamin D because we have abundance of sunshine and all that. So <laughs> But that doesn't mean that we're not vitamin D deficient in Nigeria because sometimes we don't take our babies out anyway, so you have to be careful as well. All right, let's move on. Okay, oh, we already the time is up. Good morning, ma'am. Please, is it good to introduce homemade banana pudding to a seven-month-old baby? And then the second question, my seven-month-old baby pulled more than four times yesterday. Is that normal? Banana body is fine. Uh, I've already answered the question about the stool. Is the stool normal? Is it watery? If this normal stool... It's fine. If it is not normal stool, that is diarrhea. If it is watery, it's diarrhea. Then you need to watch. Then you need when you are making your own made food for your baby. Please, hygiene is very important. Make sure you wash your hands 
very well. Make sure you maintain good eye chain. Very, very important. Very, very important. And also when your children are at that age, when they are sitting and crawling all over the place, make sure your environment is clean. Sometimes it's not even from your food. It is from the children touching all the dirty places. Put, you know, they touch things, everything they take, they put it in their mouth. So you must make sure you sterilize your toys. You must make sure they are crawling in neat environment. These are the things that make the children to start having diarrhea. And then people think it's a titting. It is not titting. It is the dirty environment. It is the dirty toys. It is those things they're touching. And sometimes some mothers even think it's okay for them to be, for children to be eating sand and all that. That is part of the development. No. And that's why our children have uh, diarrhea and then everybody will not say it's a titting. It's not titting. These are the things that is concerning. All right. Okay. Our time is up. We'll just take the final questions we have. Amadi is complaining okay. that those of us in Nigeria cannot afford hospital bills. Amadi. <laughs> I don't think so. Nigeria hospital, even the government hospital, most of them, they are subsidized. You don't pay for consultation most of the time. You only pay for your maybe drugs and tests and all. That. So try, try, try. And anyway, that's why we are on ACP so that we'll teach you how to prevent so that you don't end up having to go to the hospital anyway. So that's wow, just, I long. think this will be uh, one of our last questions. Time is up now. Good morning, no Doctor. Good morning, Doctor. My three months old baby has cut her for like three days now. The other sibling had cut her some days ago. I kept telling them to stay away from her, but they wouldn't go to their room. Because Whenever they saw, <laughs> there's no one to carry him. So I have not used anything because it's on EBF. I just believe the cutter will run its course and go. Please, yeah. what can yeah, concern? Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you. Your question is so long. I right? just always keep it short. Yeah. Anyway, I agree with you. If the baby is not having fever and all that, just leave it. Just keep breastfeeding. Keep the baby warm. It will be fine. But make sure that uh, your baby is not uh, having uh, fever. So clean the is the one continuing that he knows it's not really running, it just releases cancer. So it's fine. Just make sure you keep everybody warm and just make sure you keep breastfeeding the baby. If the baby doesn't if the baby have fever or cough, then you have to take to the hospital. Thank you. Final right. question. Yeah. Okay, this is from Presh. Please, doctor, is it okay to give my baby cod liver oil at six months? And what is the function? You don't know the function of the drug you want to give the baby. <laughs> because, every every other mother, because every other mother is giving cod liver oil. That's why she wants to give. So cod liver oil is supposed to be a source of some of those fat soluble vitamins and calcium. I think so. Uh, we don't routinely recommend some of those. Things. Like I always say, most of these things, if we do the nutrition, that's why we have to go and do complementary food. If you are doing your complementary food properly, you don't need to give your children excuse me you don't need to give your children sure. drugs you don't need to give them supplements you don't even need to give them all the vitamins that's the honest truth it's only because sometimes people are not sure whether they are giving uh the, the food that they're giving is supporting all these things then that is why they are now like okay just in case let me give much vitamin just in case let me cut liver oil but you can also mm -hmm. give all this in from your natural food so it is not necessarily and it's not compulsory i'm uh, uh okay this is another okay this is another china yeah okay i thought it's, it's not china mm -hmm. yes this is okay in fact that way you should be giving your seven month old your seven month old should yeah. be on homemade food made in your own kitchen you guys need to go and do that nutrition one no two course on complementary training. I think most people asking questions have not done the course. I know you've not done it because if you have done it, you will, you will know the answer to your question. Okay, so well, our time is up. Um, just to say that this program has been brought to you by Axe Pediatrician Foundation, and we we do a lot of things beyond what we do online. We also do offline medical outreaches to indigenous communities. For those of you that join us at the beginning, we mentioned that. And just to let you know that you can always be part of what we're doing. You can support us. And you that's our account details showing there on the screen. And so it's going to be in 2019, we are going to be in all the states of Nigeria. And we are going to have outreaches in all the states. And you can imagine that's going to cost a lot of money. And we are just inviting you to be our partner. And you can support ACP for as low as 1,000 a month. It's, I mean, you can just say, I want to be a partner of active pediatrician. I'm just going to give 1,000 a month. And you can trust me that every Naira, every couple given to ACP is going into outreaches. We don't 
we i mean all our people we are all completely volunteers we don't pay anybody for anything and all our services we do it for free even all our all this we're doing online everything we do it for free even when we do our outreaches it's for free so we definitely need a lot of support and so if you are looking for which charity to support in the year 2019 you can make ask the pediatrician foundation your your support you can partner with us and i'm sure that if you do that you will really be blessed and on that note once again i really want to thank those who partner with me for my birthday and to support the children from makoko for their <laughs> christmas party i mean these are children that on a normal day they will not have anywhere to go to and so for them to for us to be able to you know the uh, community of saints a video for the past i think 10 years i've been uh doing christmas party for these children and it's been so awesome and i i just felt that i should use my birthday as an opportunity to fundraise for them and thank you we got i think half a million naira sent to them already cool. and so it's going to be wonderful don't worry we'll, we'll bring you all the pictures <laughs> so thank you so much for all those who contributed and so if you are listening to us there are many ways you can partner with us you can just be a voluntary donor you can be a volunteer for our programs you can sponsor our ACP Live. You can advertise your products and services on our program. So there are many ways you can be part of ATP. So if you want to be part of it, just uh, send us your. Uh, you can get. You can reach us. You can email us on askpediatricians at gmail dot com or ask as askpediatricians dot com. Just just get in touch with us, and we will have uh, a way to uh, discuss to so be able to uh we'll tell you how we can be partners and we, we, there's so many things coming up in the in the year 2019 sorry <laughs> and yes and, <laughs> and we want to use this opportunity to also wish all of you a merry christmas and have a wonderful new year aspiration will be shutting down from monday and then we'll be back in January. It's because we want our volunteers who have been working so hard uh, from 20, from January till now, they work so, so hard. We, we think they deserve that two weeks break yes. to enjoy their holidays, to recharge with their families and all that. And on behalf of all the, of the Board of Trustees of Accepticial Foundation, and in my own capacity as the uh, uh, CEO of Active Generation Foundation, I really want to say a big thank you. Thank you. But really, really, from the depth of my heart, I really want to say a big thank you to all our volunteers, uh, our moderators. We have so many moderators. Moderators on Active Generation Facebook group. If you are listening, um, this is me, Dr. Gabriel Salaboy, they're telling you thank you so much you. for all that you do i really appreciate we, we i mean we, we are we are chronic chronically all that we've been able to achieve in the year 2018 has been so so much so massive that we've been able to do and it's all because of you because of all that you do your time your data i really want to say thank you for those who have been joining me on acp live sometimes we struggle to find somebody to moderate this program <laughs> i really want to thank Ope. i want to thank vera i want to thank busayo i want to thank i hope i didn't forget anybody's name now uh oh, vivian and all uh, all the people that have been joining us on acp live i also want to thank all our professionals who have and to all our active protection foundation group discussions dr buki dr walma dr so uh, dr rotimi so many of you you know yourself i really want to say thank you because without you we will not be here today i really also want to thank all our outreach volunteers who are watching me or you are watching this later on just to say we thank you sometimes we you, we drive you up and down we don't even give you anything but you see calm you're still so dedicated you're still so committed i want to really say thank you so much i want to really appreciate all every one of you i want to appreciate all the members of active and facebook group you guys have been so wonderful you've been you've been awesome i mean because you kept pushing us you kept asking us for more and we really want to thank you so today is a vote of thanks <laughs> because it's our final <laughs> open house sorry that we've taken like 15 minutes extra but i think it's important that we we thank God for what we have been able to achieve in year 2018, and we're looking forward and to 2019. And we also want to thank all those 
who have been instruments of this. We've achieved so much, and we're looking forward so much to, to so much in 2019, and we want you to be part of it. And I think for everybody who has been part of ACP, I, I'm a good sense, and I don't, I'm not ashamed of that, and I pray for all my people, and I know that God will bless you, because when you give, my Bible tells me that it will be given back to you, good measure, shaking, running over, Shaman, God will use men to give it to your bosom. And so I declare that for everybody who has been part of Acts of International Foundation, for everybody who has given to this, whether it's your time, whether it's your money, whatever you've given to it, I decree that the blessings of God that comes on those who give will be your portion in Jesus' name. And as you go into this year, 2019, you will have testimonies upon testimonies as a result of what you have done for us. So I really want to thank every one of you. And I really want to also use this opportunity finally to wish you all uh, a Merry Christmas. And I'm looking for our season screen since yes. <laughs> I really want to wish all of you to have a Merry Christmas and a beautiful and beautiful year 2019. Thank you so much. Okay, final word. Wow, <laughs> thank you so much time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was very great. Thank you. And I also want to thank Dr. Bimi on behalf of all professionals and all volunteers and all moderators of ATP. Thank you for giving us a platform to work with you. We really and sincerely appreciate you. I mean, nobody can do what Dr. Bimi is doing. Yeah, no. <laughs> we appreciate you, Dr. Bimi. God bless you. And we pray that God will continue to strengthen you and Amen. give you more wisdom to carry this on. Amen. And I'll say to everybody, Watch out for ATP in 2019. Yes, uh, it's going to be a big bang. So yes. don't be too far away from ATP. Yes, and thank yes. you for joining us today. Have a very Merry Christmas and a blessed oh. New Year. Right. See you next year. Bye. Bye. <laughs>